Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, evening. Lovely. Hey, evening, how are you? How's it going, man? Uh, pretty good. I uh, just ate something, just took a walk. Nice. Through, uh, What's the weather like over there? Uh, 22 degrees, I think like 20 right mm -hmm. now. Nice. Yeah, it's like daytime. It's like, um, I guess like 25, 26 at this period and evening and it gets to, it gets down to like 18 and nighttime, like really like morning is like, you can get even like 10 degrees. Oh, it's a pretty cold cool extreme then. No, not really. This is like we're used to this period of time. Of, 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 we're, we're used to this time of year to have like temperatures like this. And it's actually pretty awesome because summer's over. Like summer here was like, you guys had a heat wave some time ago, right? It was like yeah, 40 degrees back. there or something like that. It was like insanely hot. Right? Or, um, yeah, it was a few weeks back. It, we, it only lasted about a few days, I think. Yeah, I know, I know. But it, it was really hot, right? Yeah. Well, that's summer for us. For like, oh, right. let's say one month out of the three of the summer is like sort of like bath weather. And the first and the last one are somewhere in between, but still really hot. And then in the winter time, it's actually pretty normal, like daytime to have like sub zero degrees and nighttime could get like minus 20, sometimes even minus 30. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's like very variance. The very, the, the weather here is like variance. Okay. <laughs> it's like spring and autumn are sometimes like, sometimes like this 20, 25 during daytime and like nighttime like 10 summer yeah. is really what, fucking hot i hate summer <laughs> would you prefer which one do you prefer uh, winter or summer i prefer right now i like 25 degrees daytime 10 nighttime it's perfect like 18 degrees in the evening it's perfect to take a walk it's like like the perfect temperature to take a walk it was like jeans on and a jacket and it's, yeah for me, I like not too cold not too hot exactly I totally love that and daytime it's like you can go like like t-shirt and jeans and it's perfect like it's perfect, perfect, because in summertime I'm also a bit like, uh, let's say a little bit overweight. So I, basically, I'm like one meter eighty six, and I weigh one hundred and seven kilograms. So, but I'm really tall, so it kind of compensates. <laughs> um, so basically, I kind of like sweat during the summer. You know, fat people yeah. sweat a little bit, so it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, not the nicest time. This summer, and I don't have AC because I I was I had AC. But I was forced to move in May by my landlord, so I had to find some in, in ten days. So I had to find something really fast. I'm actually glad I found this apartment, but it doesn't have AC, so I literally died during the summer. So do a lot of buildings, uh, houses, apartments there have AC? No, actually not. No. Uh, yeah. we, we used to like summer here used to be like up to thirty, maybe thirty five, very rarely forty. Now it's gone a bit like hotter. The, maybe this summer or maybe it's long like this summer and not the last one but the previous one so yeah it's kind of like it really sucks the Romanians don't pretty aren't pretty used to like ac but we're kind of like getting there yeah you guys don't have it right no we don't no you don't need it you have like really good weather there everyday rain <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much especially where i'm wales oh really you're from wales yeah that's like yeah so not england uh, next door that, that's like north or south um, so do you know where England is? Yeah, of course. So we're next door to that to the left, and I'm up in the North Wales. Ah, yeah, I know, I know. So it's like, yeah, yeah, okay. I always compared kind of like the UK like a, to a like kangaroo for some reason. So you're yeah. basically where the ears are? Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty much. Yeah, a bit lower. Got it, got it. Okay, okay. Hey, Wales, that sounds pretty interesting. I actually never... Uh, did I... Um, I might have, but I don't really know if I had any student from... Yeah, we're only a small country. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to show you my screen. First of all, welcome to Scrum Coaching. Yep. I hope you'll enjoy and you. it will be actually useful. I have your database imported already. Uh, you're coded 101? Yes, that's right. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see what we have here. We've got moment five speed, which we're currently lacking on. But at normal tables and regular tables, we're doing actually okay-ish. Okay-ish. Obviously, we can boost our win rate. We can go yep. like pretty further um yeah i don't okay. really know why there's such a difference between the i think it's more regs on the uh fast yeah okay let me let me by the way what do you do like as a job because it kind of helps me coach uh i teach maths you teach maths <laughs> i do okay you're gonna love my course then <laughs> 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 all right so uh and probably you like poker okay so uh in in speed because I'm familiar with potty, I'm familiar with poker star zoom, I'm familiar with like eye poker speed tables. So yeah. in speed poker, 
the rake to fish ratio is higher. Okay, so basically, uh, there's more rake per fish. So that yeah. means that you always win more blinds per hand hands with a fish at your table. So if you have less tables, because it gets like circular motion, circular motion. So you get put in with the fishy guy, then reg, 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 reg. So at tables with only regs, regs are tighter, right? So let's say you, you, you do play a tight range. You're kind of like nitty guy. You're going to understand a bit more because you like the stuff that I'm going to be uh, teaching you. Yeah. Because I'm going to try to help you think from a different point of view uh about a poker but yeah rec to fish ratio being smaller this kind of means that this guy let me see i'm also recording this so you'll get the recording right after and also like a text file that we built uh Lovely. during the session also probably some ranges um it goes something like this so you always have to think in poker basically and not take anything for granted so i'm mostly going to teach you how to think yeah uh rec to fish ratio being higher than basically idea is that your win rate drops this minus 2.66 actually doesn't really mean that you're losing apparently yeah. your big blinds per hundred hands is minus 2.66 but rake you see that 153 is 2.5 approximately right yeah so 150 2.5 rake will be almost 400 so if rake is almost 400 then that means that's around i guess 2.5 2.5 another 1.25 1.50 it's going to be around 6.5 up to almost 7 blinds per 100 hands. Yeah, right? good point. So actually, you're beating the average player pool, but that's the whole point. Rake is the biggest problem in a sense <laughs> that... Yeah, it is. It is, to be honest. Yeah. Because if rake didn't exist, around 30% of players would be constantly winning, let's say, or 25% or 20%, not 5%. Yeah. Okay? You don't... Maximum, like, 5% at your limit, limit are constantly winning. Let's say, like, 2% move up. And so on. So you're really close to that. You're really close to breaking even. You're really close to doing like the right stuff. But there are look, um, you have to learn a little bit how to exploit your opponents. Also, in like fast speed, you know, like speed hold them, you'll have a hut. So we'll focus a little bit on that. And also we'll focus on a little bit about on playing without a hut. Yeah. Okay, because uh, like fixed tables, regular tables, you don't have that. That luxury, let's say. No. Okay. Three. So playing a little bit nitty. We don't know how to steal that much. You're stealing 35, 37% from the small blind, 41% from the button, 26% from the cutoff. Okay. So you'd expect them to be bigger? A lot bigger. Okay, so this is kind of like lower than my default opening range, but I vary my range depending on the opponent that is in the big blind. Same goes for here. This is like smaller than my default opening range. Uh, we're not really squeezing a lot, which squeezing is a little bit profitable. I'm going to also teach you about that. Folding yeah. a lot to three bets. So we kind of have to build a little bit on opening and then folding and not folding that much to three bets because we're exploitable here. Yeah. Um, flop three bets seems fine, but it depends on which flops you're going on, going on about. And then turn three bets seems fine, river three bets seems fine. So here we kind of have it a little bit now. How does it feel to win zero and then pay like $700 to party poker? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, sorry I'm, 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 I'm picking on you. Yeah, I'm picking on you. <laughs> You did get some of that back because they do offer some rake back, as I'm aware. They do, yeah. All right. So at, le at least that. At least that. Um, okay. Let's start out a little bit with break even full frequency because it's like we, we, we kind of start out with some notions and then build up from there. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with pot odds. I'm sure you're pretty familiar with yeah. some other stuff, right? Like being a bad guy in flight odds and stuff like that. But uh, break even full frequency is kind of like a notion that it, that is. Uh, like overlooked by a lot of poker players and it's actually the most important one and it goes something like this in poker and we're in hold them in poker it's like it's various like stud is not the case uh in yeah. hold them there's always some money on the table okay so be it uh blinds annies or uh, the bot right if you bet and i'm sure you'll understand this notion really easily if you bet a certain amount there is a percentage that correlates to that bet size okay that okay. if your opponent folds more than that percentage you are making profit without cards right so this is called hmm. auto profit i will refer from now on to auto profit for this okay so basically example uh we have six seven offsuit and open the button which you're currently not really doing but you will soon. Um, 
big blind calls, and then uh, flop comes, ace nine deuce rainbow. So we have jack shit basically. Um, so pot is pot on the flop. The flop is forty dollars, let's say, and we bet twenty bucks. Okay, so this means that. Let's say we don't really have any equity, but we know that this is, for example, what some other people call a dry board. So it's like disconnected. It's rainbow. So we kind of can estimate that our opponent is not our opponent's range is not going to hit it that often. Right. So if our opponent doesn't really have an ace or a pocket pair or, or a knight, it's kind of hard for him to call even with a hand like king jack or king queen. So we decide to bet half pot 20. So the formula is amount bet the formula to get the percentage is amount bets divided by amount bets plus the pot, right? Because we're betting for our opponent to fold, so it has to work x in x plus pot, right? Yeah. So if you, uh, of course, if you multiply this by 100, it's gonna result in a percent. Now, one of the ideas here is that if our opponent folds two thirds of the times, right? It's going to be something like plus 40, we win the pot, we win the pot, and then we lose 20. So overall, it's going to be plus $60, right? So our opponents yeah. fold twice, we win the 40 twice, and then we lose 20 because we lose our investment. So we win 60 divided by 3 every time we win uh, the 20, right? Now, our opponent folds one out of three times. This is just like taking it, for example, we won once the 40, lose 20, lose 20. This is overall zero, right? So this is yeah. zero AV. This is break even. This is what we're looking for basically break even fold frequency okay so for half pot it's going to be the division is going to be half we're investing half pot to win pot plus half pot right so it's half pot divided by three halves right so it's one divided by three 33 percent okay yeah how this translates is if you're if you bet half pot on any street at any point okay in hold'em in hold'em then if your opponent folds more than 33% of the range that he got there got there with okay um, you're going to be making a profit no matter what cards you have cool yeah so sense. this is this is so understood up to now yeah okay so this is not only available for half pot but you guessed it, obviously, for any bet size. So yeah. for, you don't have to like calculate for everything. For like one third pot, it's going to be twenty five percent. For one fourth pot, it's going to be some like twenty percent, right? Because we're investing one fourth to win five fourths. Half pot is going to be thirty three percent. Two thirds pot is going to be forty percent. Three quarters pot is going to be forty three percent, and full pot is going to be fifty percent. So sometimes you're going to need these numbers to have them in your head. Now, this is good. We're going to talk about bluffable boards at some point and using these percentages. Now, one other thing that is very important and we're gonna bust one of your leaks right now, which is the steal from the small blind, which is really small, is this. Okay, so stealing from the small blind versus like normal 10 zoom pool should be a lot higher. I know those guys, most of them are needy. It goes something like this. Uh, if you're in small blind, by the way, how much are you opening? What's your size? So size, you're not range. Um, three big blinds. Three big blinds, okay. So having that the small blind is already down there, you're actually investing only 2.5, right? Mm -hmm. To win a total yep. of four, because you win the three plus the big blind, if the big blind folds, basically, okay? So this means that the break-even fall frequency for this will be 62.5% BFF, right? From now on, break-even fall frequency is gonna be your BFF, right? Best friend, best friend forever. Yep. Okay, <laughs> so this means that big blind has to be defending at least, at least 40% range uh, so that you're not making auto profit. And we're going to go into Ecolab. I'm going to show you what 40% means. And then you're going to figure out that a lot of people don't actually defend this range and you can just steal any two cards <laughs> from the small blind versus a lot of people that I'm going to give you stats on. So, uh, 40%, something like this. Let's go back a little bit. Something like this. Okay. 40.27% exactly. A lot of people do not defend queen eight offsuit, king seven offsuit, king eight offsuit, ten nine offsuit, even hands like king three suited, queen five suited, they just fold ten seven suited. Okay, ten seven suited is kind of like an easier defense. But a lot of people fold these hands. And they don't only so they don't only need to defend forty percent as calling. The secret the secret is that they need to three bet at least somewhere around twenty percent. 
because if they just call 35 percent then three bet only nice plus nice queen then you're still going to be able to exploit them post swap a lot yeah okay so if you if your opponent is not defending and don't worry i'm going to give you some rules correlated with vpip actually so if your opponent is not defending enough hands you can open 100 percent any two cards from the small blind aim and even check fold every flop because but swap is independent right so you're opening you're opening you're opening you even check fold every flop and then uh win but you're not going to check fold and then win uh in the long run uh, you're not going to check fold every flop, obviously, because you're going to have mm. like a lot of stuff. You're going to bet break. Uh, you're going to bet bluff pull boards, right? You're going to bet flush draws, open and straight draws, gut shot plus overs, right? You're going to bet like top pair good keeper plus. You're going to bet like two pair plus, etc. Or you're going to trap your opponents. You're going to get more money. We're going to talk a little bit about how to play 100% post flop now. Um, rules. This is where we'll be easy. Rules for stealing 100% from the small blind. And rule number one, if you have fi uh, yeah, 50, 100 plus hands on big blind and his VPIP smaller or equal to 24, then open 100%. Cool? Up to now? Okay. Right. Yeah. If you have 20 to 50 hands on big blind and his VPIP smaller or equal to 22, open 100%. And you'll, be, you'll actually be amazed how often this works. Less than 20 hands on big blind and his VPIP. By the way, how proficient are you with HUDs? So you know what VPPFR, 3 bad, yeah, so three yeah, bad total skill, total fold steel. Okay. Uh, his VPIP small or equal to 19, open 100%. Um, why is the less hands we have, the, the smaller the VPIP? Basically, the less hands we have, the more incorrect or far from reality uh, our uh, VPIP stat will be. Okay. Yes. VPIP and Taking PFR. By the way, VPIP and PFR are the only stats that are actually valid or valid over a sample of less than 100 hands. Okay. Three bet is not because three bet. First of all, it doesn't occur that often. Someone has to raise for the three bet stat to actually be in practice, right? So if everyone folds, I'm in the big blind, everyone folds, the three bet stat doesn't really get exercised because no one raised. So I didn't have the opportunity to three bet. So it doesn't take, it basically it doesn't exist. It doesn't get taken into consideration. So let's say over like 100 hands, I'm probably gonna only have somewhere around, let's say 33 or 40% chances that someone gets raised. Someone has me gets raises basically. So I get a chance to, uh, I get a chance to three bet. So generally it's only going to be a sample of like 30 hands that I get to three bet on. And it's not really relevant. Not like really close to reality. Three bet stat, unless of ridiculous proportions needs like 200, 300 hands at least. Okay. Ridiculous yeah. proportions would mean 2% over like 80 hands or 20% over 80 hands. Okay. Yeah. These are ridiculous, ridiculous proportions. Getting back to this 50 to 100 hands on big blind His VPIP is lower, lower than 24 open to 100%. The more hands you have, the more accurate VP, VPIP is going to be. So if we have a, an opponent who has who, on whom we have, let's say 10 hands and his VPIP is 24, then it's a lot more often that it's going to be higher than if we have like, let's say 100 hands. Okay. It's not really accurate on 10 hands. So we take a little bit of margin of error so that we're not sorry afterwards because an opponent that has VP, VPIP, let's say 15 over 10 hands or 20 hands could just have had like a cold deck, a cold deck and yeah. then he's, his real VPIP is 30, but there's a lot less chance of that happening when we have a lot more hands on him. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. Now, number four, and pay attention to this. If we have more than 40 hands on big blind and his VPIP is higher than 35, PFR lower than 12, and three bets lower than six, open 100% and C bet every bluffable, sorry, bluffable board. Why is this? What type know. of player is this? So high VPIP. He's going to be a loo loose pattern. Yeah, exactly. Something like this, right? High VPIP, low PFR, low three bet. Why? What's the loose passive strategy? Loose passive strategy is to call and try to hit flops, right? Calling and trying to hit flops with offsuit hands 
sorry, offsuit hand will be around 30%, okay? A pair. Yeah. It's actually like 29. And with suited connector will be 50%, which will be divided by 30% pair, 10% uh, flush jaw, and around 10% or like 8% open and straight jaw, somewhere around that. It's 8 or 12, but whatever. It's somewhere around there. So they can't really hit enough flops if they call you pre flop. It's like, in reality, this like mentality is actually sound. So it's like, okay, I'm going to try to hit something and then get paid, right? So like from a logical standpoint of view, it makes sense. From a mathematical point of view, it's very exploitable. So that's what we're actually going to do on any bluff ball board. Remember that if you bet half bot, then you only need him to fold 33% of the times. He's going to fold yeah. a lot more than that. And also, so versus loose passives, the strategy, ultimate strategy is you bet flop, you bluff every bluff ball board. And then bet turn and river only with top air good kicker plus. Okay. Why? Because okay. they're going to call you with, they will never fold top pair. And they have mostly top pairs with all kickers. And they have a really hard time folding second pair. They will chase all flush shots. They will chase all straight draws, even gut shots. And they're terrible most of the time. So this is why we bet run and river only with top air good kick plus. Big pointer. Okay when they raise turn and river or turn or river okay they always have two per plus okay <laughs> always yeah. always will find loose passive to raise with two per plus unless they are super huge whales sometimes like seven seven seventy seven twenty one these guys might raise some other stuff okay but always most of the time these guys who are like 40 and 5 30 and 1. why do they raise two pair because look at the hands that they raise they raise aces and kings. They think aces and kings are the best hands, right? Which is actually correct, but they only use those, so they're really exploitable. But they always put you, when you're betting flop and turn, they always put you on aces kings, so they're trying to beat that. <laughs> so they're, so they, yeah. that's why they all, all, always raise like two pair plus, okay? So continue yeah. continue only with uh, flush jaw open and straight jaw if, if possible, so if the implied odds are correct, also with uh, at least top and bottom pair uh top and bottom pair means to pair okay so basically like yeah. at least like let's say eight 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 seven deuce at least uh ace deuce why because he can have eight seven which is okay because we're bidding at least something in his range and also we can catch an ace or a deuce so that covers for like eight percent of our equity okay so this is how you're stealing 100 percent from the small blind now um Let's talk a little bit how a little bit about how to play how to play this 100% post flop, and I think this is going to be like really cool and edu educational. Let's say that we get a board like a7-3 rainbow, and how to play 100% post flop versus a wreck. Okay, so we're not in straight versus fishy guy loose passive. We already talked about it. We know. Okay. Okay. Versus a wreck. What are we betting on this board? What are we check check calling, and what are we uh, check folding? Because we're going to be out of position. Wreck is going to be in small blind, right? So what are we betting? First of all, this is a very bluffable board. So in general, we're gonna bet all our air, okay? Because yep. we're getting, and we're, we're betting something like half bot, okay? Almost always on this board. So we're betting yep. all our air, so this means we're actually check fold nothing, right? Because nothing is worse than air. So <laughs> we're betting all our air. And then what else are we betting? Uh, pretty much we're also gonna bet, uh, sorry? Just sell pay. Yeah, it could be. Two pay, could be. could be, okay. So why are we betting? Yeah, but for example, on a board, to be honest, for example, on a board like Jack Seven Three Rainbow, we're gonna talk after after this about it. I wouldn't really bet sets, and I'll explain to you why after. Because it's okay. really hard for our opponent to actually have something on that board. Because if you think about it, like a big blind versus small blind calling range, will probably contain a lot of asexes, like all asexes, but not that many jacks, right? Mm -hmm. So let's try to find a big blind. Uh, so call call versus small blind, okay? All aces, not only these are like jack x's, okay? Only these are jack x's. That's it. So on like jack seven three, I would probably not bet pocket threes, pocket sevens, okay? I'd probably let my opponent catch up a little bit, maybe with like some ace queen or something, or let let him bluff me, right? But okay. on a seven three, it's actually a pity not to bet sevens, threes, uh, a seven and a three. Why are we check calling aces? 
I suppose you want to keep in the queens, the jacks, the tens, the nines. He's probably going to three bet those three three bet. queens, yeah. jacks, threes. So this is the case where we open small blind and big blind calls. We're check calling aces because we block too many aces. Okay? So this means that we have two in our hand. There's one down there. There's really, really, uh, it's really unlikely that our opponent is also going to have yeah. one. Right? Okay. Now, uh, complicated notion uh, coming forward. Uh, we're going to bet ace king, probably ace queen. Why? Because we want three streets of value from like ace jack and ace down, right? Okay. Yep. What else are we betting? We're going to bet any 3x and any 7x. Why? Because we need uh, we need protection, okay? We're happy to get folds on this flop if we have a 7 or a 3 because a lot of our opponent's range is going to contain a king, a queen, a jack, a 10, a 9, right? Overcards. So all these overcards, <laughs> overcards have six outs versus small pairs, right? So it's gonna be uh, always, do you know how, how, to, how you calculate outs? Uh, percentage yeah. for outs? So for the flop, uh, multiply by four. Uh, yeah, okay, but I yeah. would generally uh, advise you to move away from this thinking. Okay, multiply by four, yeah, for flush shows, open and straight shows, if you go all in, but most of the time you won't, right? So you only calculate for the turn and for the river, right? So for example, if you're bending, let's say, one third pot to protect your pocket sevens from overcards, right? Then, yeah. not not in this case, in general. Let's say you have a pocket pair and you want to protect versus overcards. You bet one third pot, then your opponent will have 12% for the turn, right? Six outs, times okay. 10%, yeah. right? 12% turn. And you're only betting just to save yourself for the turn, not for the river also. So you're only calculating for that 12%. And 12% uh, for the okay. river. So if you check these seven Xs, and he might check back in Jack, you're giving him really, really pretty much free equity, okay? The ways to make money in poker or in hold'em, for example, right? Because that's what we're interested in, are getting called by worse, right? Folding better, and a lot of people forget these and don't know what they do, don't know why they do stuff, and they do stuff anyways, don't do that. Generally know what you're trying to accomplish. Betting a dry board means protection, means folding better, okay? Or folding equity, this is folding okay. equity, okay? And the fourth one is actually break-even fold frequency. Break-even fold frequency is easier to explain if you think about an ATM machine. So there is an ATM machine in your town, in Wales, and in the town in Wales that you live in, and you pass by it one day and it spits a coin. And you're like, what? You're like, but what's happening? Okay, so you take that coin, and then you're like, the second day that you pass by it, it spits a coin again. So you kind of start like like a Pavlov's dog, right? You start understanding what's happening. So then you start passing by. Wouldn't you actually pass by it like one million times? True. Right? You yeah. get that one million coins. This is the long run. This is EV. This is this is exactly what's happening. Every time you steal versus an opponent who defends only like 30% range, you're getting a coin. Yeah. Every time as soon as you bluff a up, board, it? Yeah. Every time you bluff a bluff a board, you're getting a coin. These coins get bigger and bigger the higher you go in limits. Okay, so these coins in, like invested now yeah. are gonna go like grow bigger, 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 and the more you test out right now, the more you understand. All right. So these overcards, we're gonna try to bet these. So protection from overcards, and what other hands are in the exact same predicament? Deuces. So you go for pocket pairs, would you? Yeah. Uh, set eights, nines. Okay, even tens. Now. The advanced concept is I'm going to be check calling kings, queens, jacks. Why? There's Look at the uh, ways to make money, right? So every time you think about a hand, look at the ways to make money. Getting called by worse. Are we getting called by worse? Not much because our opponent is either going to have six, uh, ace x or some pocket pairs. But the problem is if we bet the flop, then on the turn, it's going to be really hard to play. You can't really bet flop that turn. You're so you let him catch up a bit as well with something like king, queen, queen, jack. Exactly, but so you don't have really have overcards like kings, queens, and jacks. Very small possibility of him getting an overcard. Also, one more thing is with these hands, you're either way ahead or way behind. When yeah. you're way ahead or way behind of like a par parts of his range, there's not much, not really much incentive in betting. So you're either way behind because he either has an ace, so you have two outs. Or you're way ahead, he doesn't have an ace with pocket king, so he has two outs with his pocket pairs, like five outs with his seven, eight, or some, somewhere around that. Okay? So not yep. that much incentive to bet. And also, what else are we going to check call? Ace deuce up to ace jack. 
okay except for the two pair that we said that we're betting and ace king against queen you can also add a queen here if you want to i'd say bet two streets at least but check calling is fine if you have opponents that are very aggressive why ace deuce if you can understand that on this board on a7-3 ace deuce is, is ex exactly the same as kings you don't have any overcards yeah. if your opponent calls you have basically and this is called this practice by the way this is called bluff catching okay and this balance this balances your checking range on a lot of boards but this doesn't really let's say this doesn't really matter for party in ultimate 10 but uh, it matters moving on further to higher limits also it does give your opponent when he has king jack a chance to uh a chance to bluff this is why it's called bluff yeah. catching also what do you check call turn with check calling turn you're probably gonna go on for like ace five plus and sets that you catch on the turn and two pair that you catch on the turn right and also aces again so you you become basically by why do we check call ace jack ace ten uh, ace queen and so on because we become uh if we only check call like ace deuce and ace three ace four ace five then or like pocket kings we become very vulnerable to double barreling because our opponent only needs 33 percent of our range to fold so we're not going to give him that by check calling ace jack ace ten even ace queen sometimes understood so if you check then your opponent will sometimes e double barrel or even triple barrel the board yeah. what are we check calling calling river with well we have something like a stand plus two pair of sets and check race aces right so there you have it all right yeah so that's kind of like the whole thing that's kind of like how how you play basically uh out of position by opening even 100 percent, and we missed something here we missed actually three seven which is the sweetest spot you open three seven you flop two pair you triple barrel <laughs> get called by ace queen your opponent is like <laughs> what is this guy doing but you'll see they just fold way 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 too often i even have students that steal too yeah. much i have students that steal 90 percent from the small blind and i'm like dude, dude you're gonna get into tricky spots opponent will start three betting you a lot and you need to learn it's not bad but you need to learn how to adjust don't steal versus everyone steal versus only the guys who fold way too much and don't have a brain for adjusting so that's that's basically kind of like a little bit of a breakdown on how you're supposed to play post flop let's now talk about a bit more interesting board let's say queen seven five with two spades down there okay this is a bit different now this board or let's say let's say even even harder queen eight nine two spades okay this board is not really bluffable okay not really bluffable so so what are we betting what are we check calling x is check what are we check folding okay we're gonna bet probably what ace queen king queen okay we're gonna check fold our all our air so basically the like let's say even like uh five four suited like ace five suited that is not spades right etc Okay? Yeah. All our air that doesn't really hit this board. We're gonna bet queens, we're gonna bet eights, we're gonna bet nines, we're gonna bet queen eight, queen nine, and eight nine. Okay? Real protection, get value from queens, get value from flush shots. We need protection. Any ten, any jack is a really shitty card down there for eight nine, for example, for or for almost every set, so it's not really that great. Any spade, you don't wanna see a spade down there. Okay. We're always gonna bet flush shots. We're always gonna bet jack ten because we do get called by so many hands in our opponent's range. We're almost yeah. always going to bet something like uh, King Jack with the King of Spades. Okay. We're going to bet uh, King Jack with the Jack of Spades. Okay. So this is kind of like taking in a little bit of, into like the ideas of what you're supposed to do. Check uh, also, what else are we uh, check folding? Sevens minus, sevens and lower. Okay. You don't really want to get involved yeah. with these lower pairs on this board, especially if your opponent is calling way too often. Because even a hand like Ace 8, or sorry, like let's say Ace 10 or. Ace Jack will have insane equity versus you. Yeah. All right. Also, what else are we betting? Any uh, Ace of Spades X. Okay. If we have the Ace of Spades, we why are we betting? Uh, not only because we get another like twenty percent of the times so we get a spade on turn and we can barrel. Not not because of that. Because it's so like not only because of that, but also because we're blocking a lot of our opponent's flush shots. Our opponent cannot have like Ace Jack of Spades. Cannot have the Ace of Spades to call us with. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're getting yeah. more fold equity with this hand. Okay. Uh, king 10 with the king of spades right king 10 with the 10 of spades and so on all right what are we check calling pocket jacks pocket tens it's kind of there no re no real point in betting why is there no real point in betting it's really hard to play the turn okay so if you double barrel you're going to get called by flush draws and stronger hands than yours queen axis right 